Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very complex exponential equation. Maybe complicated too, but don't worry, we'll be able to solve it. So we have 3 plus 4i to the power z equals 2 plus 11i. And we're supposed to find the value of z that makes this equation true. In other words, you take a complex number and then you raise it to a complex power you get another complex number. What is the complex number used in the exponent? It's kind of like a really complex question, don't you think? If you're new to complex numbers, check out my lecture videos because I go over the basics. And I have another channel which focuses on real numbers mainly. It's called CyberMath, Cyber with an S. I focus on geometry, well, a little bit, not lately, algebra, trigonometry, and number theory. If you have any suggestions, let us know in the comment section. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Feel free to ask any type of question, as long as you follow community guidelines and you're respectful and all that stuff. Okay, great. Now, how do we find the Z value? Can't we just ln both sides? Yes, that's the silver bullet, right? Let's ln both sides. Uh-oh, I found the shortcut, right? And then from here, I can just go ahead and bring the z here. Does that always work? And then divide both sides by whatever is on the left so that I can isolate z. There you go, I got the answer, right? Kind of like a cheap solution. It kind of looks like the geometry problem. There was a geometry problem asking for an angle x and the teacher is asking find x and the student is like, here, I found it. Okay, that's not what we're looking for, right? We're not just trying to locate it, actually finding the value. Anyways. That was a fun thing to do, uh, I think, kind of like humorous, uh, maybe, I think it, that became a meme as well. So, this is not what we're looking for, because what is ln 2 plus 11i, right? Yes, we can evaluate it, but there's going to be a lot of arc tangent stuff, which we can also go into. But, first of all, I want to show you something. Let's go ahead and look at the base, which is 3 plus 4i, right? And then the result of exponentiation, which is 2 plus 11i. One thing you can do is, maybe if I square this number, I'm gonna get 2 plus 11i, right? Why not? I mean, give it a try. Let's give it a try. Take 3 plus 4i, square it, uh, 9, and then minus 16, that comes from 16i squared. Don't forget, i squared is negative one all the time, right? And then plus 24i, which is negative seven plus 24i. Uh-oh, that didn't quite work. We kind of got negative numbers and this is definitely not the answer. Maybe we can cube it? Nope, the numbers are gonna get even bigger. So what do we do? Okay, great. So at this point, I want you to think about what's called modulus of a complex number. What is the modulus of the base? Square root of three squared plus four squared, that's five. What about the modulus of the right-hand side? That should give us an idea, right? Well, probably. 2 squared is 4, and that is 125. Uh-oh, that is 5 root 5. Hmm. This is multiplied by root 5, so is z root 5? No, no, no. Multiplication and exponentiation are definitely very different. They're related, but, you know, they're not the same. But here's the thing I want you to know. If you square root this number, you get root 5. And then if you multiply it by the number, which is 5, you get 5 root 5. What is that supposed to mean? It means you multiply the square root of the number by itself, which is kind of like, hmm, cubing the square root, right? Makes sense? In other words, if you cube root 5, you get 5 root 5. That's something that you should definitely know because that comes up a lot. You should know that if I cube a, a root a, I get a root a. Uh, of course, a needs to be positive in this case, right? We're talking about real numbers. Come on, don't get too excited. So what does that mean? It means that I can probably square root this number and then cube it. That should give me 2 plus 11i. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's give it a try. Why not? It's all about experimentation, right? Can I square root this number? Probably. Especially if you consider the following fact. If you write this as 4 minus 1 plus 4i, that could be turned into the following. This is 2 squared. This is i squared. 
This is 2 times 2 times i. Uh-oh. That just became 2 plus i quantity squared. And that will be 2 plus i. We don't have absolute value here. We have the principal square root. And it is the principal square root because it has a positive real part. Or at least non-negative. Right? Well, 0 would work, I think. Anyways, whatever. You get the idea, hopefully. So 2 plus i is the square root. What happens if I cube it? That's a good question, right? Let's try. If you cube 2 plus i, you should be getting um, 2 plus i. Okay, let me use my formula. a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. That's the formula I usually use. I don't like the binomial theorem. I mean, it is a binomial theorem, but I have a shortcut. i cubed is negative i. This is 12i. This is minus 6 because 6i six squared. That is... 2 plus 11i. Uh-oh, I got the answer. Houston, we got a solution. Yay, but you got to be careful. Is that the only solution? All right, but at least we found one solution. So z equals 3 works, but how could we find it without using the moduli? Mm, it would be hard, but you could try trigonometry, inverse trigonometric functions. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So if you consider 3 plus 4i, I can write it as 5 times e to the power i theta. And theta is determined by tangent theta equals b over a, which is 4 thirds. So theta, since I'm in the first quadrant, um, uh, it's great to be there. Tan inverse, or some people don't like tan inverse. So I'm going to write r tangent 4 thirds. And then I can write uh, 2 plus 11i similarly, right? And then this time it's going to be 125 e to the i alpha. And tangent alpha is 11 over 2. And then theta is arc 10, 11 over 2. But the problem is, how do you associate these arc tangents? That's going to be very problematic. That's why looking at moduli is always a good thing. See, by the way, I think 125 is wrong. It's supposed to be square root of 125. In other words, this should be 5 root 5. All right, I know you said, hey, you made a mistake. Okay, I fixed it. Cool. Now, so basically we square root this and then cube it, right? So what does that tell you? Z is not 3. Wait a minute, guys. 3 plus 4, I needs to be square rooted and then raised to the third power to give us 2 plus 11, I. So Z is 3 halves. Uh-oh, that was super tricky and it tricked myself too. So... 3 halves seems to be the solution because this looks like a good equation, right? Don't you think? Okay, great. But that's not the only solution. Anyways, arctangent, modulus, stuff you can go through. How can we write it in a better way? So here's what you can do. You can basically uh, multiply both sides by something that would not affect the solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take 3 plus 4i to the power z, and I'm going to write it as uh, 2 plus 11i. But notice that I'm allowed to multiply both sides by something. Let me go ahead and replace this with 3 halves. Now, what happens if I raise uh, multiply both sides by e to the power 2 pi and i? When I do the lns, is that going to give me an additional answer? What do you think? So z equals... 3 halves works, but should I add 2 pi and i to make it correct at the end? Test it out, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha solution. Uh-oh, Wolfram Alpha, you're lazy. You left it at the log or ln level. Unfortunately, this means ln. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And don't forget to check out CyberMath and bye-bye.